Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Now, everybody knows that to cheese the wall of flesh, you simply kill the queen bee, take her children, and throw them at the poor guy until he perishes, and bam, you're in hard mode. Now, you gotta spend 15 hours mining. <laughs> now, you have to spend 15 hours mining hard mode ore. But what if that could change? Not the ore mining part, but the bees part. This is the Bombus Apis mod, aka the Terraria Beekeeper class, that lets you use bees throughout the entire game. I actually played this mod almost two years ago from now. But like time passes, tons of things have changed, and well, this mod did as well. Adding new weapons, mechanics, and oh, did I mention that it's also compatible with Calamity? Well, at least on the older version. But anyway, we name our character with a beautiful bee pun and start off in a brand new world. Well, that sucks. But anyway, we start reading what type of damage that we do as a beekeeper. Typically, every single new class has a new word, like melee does melee damage, range does range damage. Summoners do summoner damage. I wonder what beekeepers do. So we do Hymenopatra damage. All right. Fires a burst of three bees before throwing the empty honeycomb. Uses three honey. Ooh. Like, we're doing real good freaking damage. We have homing, essentially. Dude, the sun is... A bro Ooh! Pyramid? Give me a sandstorm in a bottle. I'll take a magic carpet, but a sandstorm? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, eh, eh, eh. How bad eh, 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 can I be? So if you guys don't know, we're playing two different mods. The Beekeeper class and the Beekeeper Calamity extension. So in the recipe browser mod, we gotta watch both of the recipe windows to see what we can craft up. We go on and build some raunchy speed houses and go mining immediately to have a grand time. Now I noticed that we started gathering a new mod and material called Pollen, and with it, I crafted a new bee armor set called Living Flower, giving us an increase to our honey bar. By the way, the way that the Beekeeper class works is that in exchange for doing decent damage you have a little honey bar which kind of recharges like a mana bar except it looks like piss i'm glad they changed that in the newer version but we're not playing the newer version but anyway i made my way to the jungle and found a weird looking tree that actually led to a beehive looking back i might have made this world a secret seed by accident okay we're out of there Whoa! no way no way no way no, 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 wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, I blocked myself in him, I hug, I'm hotboxing myself. But quickly and ever so loudly, we went down to gather some materials for the bee boomstick shotgun. A weapon that I saw uses the boomstick in its crafting recipe. And of course, if the regular boomstick was the masochist that it already is, then the bee version would be even more of a monster than that. <gasps> no way! And so we gather the materials, head on back home, and conjure ourselves a creation that even the Goblin Tinkerer would be proud of. It's destroyed? 29%? Come on! Wait, I think we can low-key fight the uh, Eye Cthulhu right now. And then we kind of have a lot of defense. No, no, we can totally do it. Who cares if there's revengeance, bro? I'm a baller. All right, let's see how this works. Mm, interesting. I'm actually kind of iffy on this weapon, guys. It's not as fast as I'd like it to be. But then again, you, know, you never know. Like, Okay, it's not bad. It's not necessarily bad, but it's not overwhelmingly good. Okay, we're doing damage. Ooh, that's doing crazy damage. Boom bang! Ba boom ba! Boom boom club. Oh, come on, I can feel I'm fresh out of Infernum, baby. What do you got on me? Ah! I got my adrenaline. I can finish this off in one go. It's over! It's over for you! Wait, it's over for- I missed. It's over for you! Ooh. What did I say about that? I have Cthulhu. You messed with the wrong beekeeper. You better believe it. Not there by all. With the eye of Cthulhu being handled, we found ourselves with a new item in our inventory. The Retina Releaser. Shooting eyes that do tons of damage at this stage of the game. But the only problem is they only do a lot of damage if we take a lot of damage. Yeah. Whoa. That is some nice Cthulhu bees. Oh. Oh, they do. They do like 40 damage if you get hit. Oh, yeah. You guys might be asking, how much DPS are we doing right now? You might ask. Oh, fat stacks, baby. Real fat stacks. Here, check it out on the King Slime. Oh, these don't have a lot of range, though. Oh, but they do so much damage. Is that a pinky? It can summon pinkies? I think I did a lot of damage. I need honey. Honey, I need some honey in my super suit. Uh, no. Leave me alone. Come on, come on, come on. We're so close. Yes! This is how we do it, baby. It's just too easy. Woo. That was gnarly. The King Slime ended up dropping the gelatinous honeycomb, which kind of homed on enemies and did explosive damage. It was nice, but my shotgun did more damage. So I kept that little thing in my little underwear crevice for some safekeeping. But then we ended up crafting the honey gun. This ended up using the slime gun that the King Slime drops that no one ever uses and throws away. And this was actually something that I was waiting for. Oh. Okay, this one's not bad. And when you get a new toy, you have to use it on new people, right? So I decided to use it on the King Slime once again as a testing dummy and shot out all of my new weapons at it. And it was pretty fun. I don't know if I'm a masochist or whatever, but I crafted a new beekeeper armor set as well called the, the Beekeeper's Armor Set. 
Okay, I'll give you some creative liberty there. But after that, we went off and built the Desert Scourge Arena. Now, if you guys are wondering, how does the Calamity extension work on the Beekeeper class? Does it go all the way to Endgame? Does it go all the way to Moon Lord? How does it work? Well, it adds a few weapons that sprinkle in between some Calamity bosses. So, for example, we're going to try to beat the Desert Scourge. After the Desert Scourge fight, we're going to get a new weapon. For your information, it only goes up to Moon Lord. So, our goal for this video is, unfortunately, beat Moon Lord. Um... Yeah, I thought it went to Supreme Calamitous for the entire playthrough, but it doesn't, and I only found that out after I beat the Moon Lord. But anyway, you can kind of see how the Calamity mod kind of interferes with the Beekeeper mod. As you can see right here, we get the Luxor's Gift, which, if you don't know, shoots a projectile depending on what class you have. So if you're using melee, it will shoot out a melee projectile. But since we're using the Beekeeper class, there's actually a extension for it and is compatible with it. And so with this machine, we make quick work of the Desert Scourge, and I mean really quick work. I don't know what we're doing, but we're doing something right because our penetration abilities are insane. It's asinine, and the Scourge himself drops the Droughted Honeycomb, which we don't really use, but we keep because we have a form of collector's anxiety whenever we play modded playthroughs. And so we craft up the Beekeeper's variant of Victide Armor set from the Calamity mod. See? The Calamity extension is pretty cool, right? And if you think our playtime is over, well, you're wrong. We make our way to the Corruption to fight the Brain of Cthulhu, and if you're thinking I made a mistake in that sentence, no, you're wrong. I'm only right, and I can only be right. Yeah, I definitely messed up the world, Jen. But it's a little too late for that. Anyway, now this fight was trivial. And I really mean trivial. I don't know what the creator put this beekeeper class on. And I'm sure I mentioned it before in my last video. But I definitely should have played in front of them or something. The beekeeper class is kicking straight balls. Oh, here comes the comment. Oh, play in front of me. Shut up. I ended up getting a pretty cool beekeeper weapon called the Brainy Honeycomb. It actually made the enemies confused and wanted to kill themselves instead. Which reminded me of Japan. And so we went on to the underworld. Ooh, spooky. And got ourselves some yummy hellstone bars. Now, the reason why we're down here is because there is an upgrade to our B shotgun that I really wanted to get. And oh boy, was this an early Christmas present. Um, oh, Hellfire B Blaster. What does it look like? Oh my god! Five honey. Holy crap! No goddamn way, folks. This is it. This is the weapon that will kill Skeletron. You freaking fly like soldier from freaking. Boom! Boom! I mean, look at that. Wait, they're homing? Not only does the Hellfire Bee Blaster, a little bit of a tongue twister there, shoots blazing bullets from hell, but it also shoots a homing BEBs? I can't believe it. See what I did there? But before we get into that, let me introduce today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's available free on PC and a ton of consoles. You can take command of over literally 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from the 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes to armored cars of the 1920 to the fighter jets and even the tanks that we use today. When you play War Thunder, you're going to be immersing yourself in intense combat. You're going to be using detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects that it makes you feel like you're right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. And when you're playing, you're not going to be alone. There is an entire worldwide community of over 70 million players. And you can play with or against them in epic PvP battles, and you will truly delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. So yeah, make sure to check out War Thunder for free on PlayStation, PC, and Xbox using my link in the description or in the pinned comment. And if you're new or you haven't played in six months, you're also going to get a massive bonus packages across every single platform that's going to include some pretty cool things, such as multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of a premium account. Just keep in mind though, it's available for a limited time only, so be quick. But yeah, with an unmatched wealth of high quality content, there is simply no better game for fans of military history. So yeah, once again, shout out to War Thunder again for sponsoring today's video. Check it out for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and use my link in the description or in the pinned comment in order to register and make sure to get that free delicious premium package. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. And yeah, let's get back into it. We end up making our way to fight the perforators and the crimson, and I was thinking that maybe we should get some area light ore after this fight and not be actual losers, unlike Cooler Arthur here. But now with the stage set, we take on the perforator boss and with our ham slinging T-bone wrangling shotgun, we make quick work of the red worm man and move on to bigger and better things. Now, if you guys are wondering, is this class overpowered? It definitely is, but I definitely struggled more than you think. There's something called a skill issue that people comment on my videos. I don't really know what it is, but if you guys want to check out the full live super cut playthrough of, of every single boss and all of my attempts, it's on my second channel. So go check that out. But anyway, after killing the perforators, we have access to Aerialite Ore, which is this blue, succulent, angelic ore that blinds you. Well, not really blinds you. The Lights and Shadows mod blinds you whenever you go to Sky Islands. Now, newer armor is pretty nice, you know, but you know what also is nice? Some good old matricide. Oh my god. Boom!
Now, after the fight, we got the Needle Shot B weapon and some Royal Jelly to boost our maximum honey capacity. We also got a shield that shoots out bees whenever we dash, and that is not broken at all. And of course, when we put this on for some reason, I don't know why, but I think they forgot to put this in the item description, but we started to like have this magical urge to start conjuring bee puns. Can you believe this is happening? Get it? This is beyond my wildest dreams. I can't wait to kill myself. Now, since this is a modded playthrough, I start building my magic storage system, and we make our way to Skeletron. The Bone Juggler himself was nothing to us. Boom! That was a little close, I'll give you that. What does this do? Whoa. Whoa, it like slashes them. Press right click to fire a cursed skull, cursing the enemies. Ooh, the slices are nice. Imagine this on the wall of flesh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. we make our way into the dungeon for some bones in order to craft something called the skeletal bee armor set. And also giving us a little honey bee minion on the corner of our character. As you can see, he's ready to risk it all for us. But anyway, we start the slime god fight. Wow. You know what? I didn't realize how many bosses calamity adds, but it feels like we fought 20 already in this in this in this playthrough. All right, we don't have to do a lot of damage. Our minion's going crazy. I will say that. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, why is there a ghost version of it? I gotta get away. I'm dying, and I don't have any honey. They're so fast. There's so many of them, dude. Oh, God. Wait, there's healing right there. Eat. Is this it? Ooh. Oh, there's a... Wait, what? Oh, okay. The slime god flees to fight another day. Suck my nuts. You're dead anyway. All right, that was close. I will say, I kind of panicked a little bit there. Beehive Greaves. All right, we're going to need some... We need a honey dispenser, pollen hive, and purified gel. So this class, I genuinely think it is definitely overpowered. If you played this on Infernum, it might hold its weight. I was very iffy if I wanted to play Infernum with this class because number one, Infernum is fucking hard and I'm ass at the game. Like if I played Infernum, I will be literally in shambles. I will cry every single day. I'll be bullied like the minority that I... I am in Infernum, dude. It's a horrible. I do not want to do it. This armor set, for some reason, reminds me of um, South Park. All right, let's put it on. We just we just made an armor set. A hive to protect us. We, diff okay, we get more damage. We get more defense. But I low-key like the little bee minion. It's kind of cute. The Hymena just a necklace. Armor penetration by 5. Max honey by 10. Releases bees. Cthulhu bees. Increases damage, movement speed, and gives the player the honey buff when damaged. That's insane. We're replacing that with our uh, honey globule. Anyway, here comes the wall of flesh. Who should be, by definition, be the ultimate inflatable arm flailing two man to beat up for this fight? I mean, we literally used him in our intro for the video. We literally said that he is the most easiest boss to kill because he is the origin, the foundation, I could say, of why you would even use bees and bee nades and whatnot. But ladies and gentlemen, hold your chestnut horses for this surprise. The beekeeper class was actually kind of... They... Oh! oh my god, we died. That was rough. We totally had that in the bag, though. I mean, like, all right, bro, I need to heal up. Oh my god! What the fuck? But of course, you know, after a good old fixing with my arena, like my parents used to console me. Actually, that's wrong. They didn't. I was able to take out the poor wall of flesh with great ease. I'm taking so much damage! Yeah! Oh my god. Oh, baby, that was too easy. Wow, we got a lot of stuff. All right, first of all, we got the demon heart. We got the demonic carnage, which is a calamity weapon. We got the beat, the honey shot. <laughs> we got the beekeeper emblem, which we will put in our extra slot. Now, in case you don't know, Calamity actually limits your hard mode progression. So instead of mining demon altars to give you access to Mithril and Oralcom and Adamantite, they instead tell you to go cry in a little corner and give you Souls of Night instead. So until we kill one of the mechanical bosses, we unfortunately have to deal with using subpar loot. And that also means no Mithril anvils. And that also means no wings. So what can we do, Adrian? Well, what can we do? Well, we can definitely start by ruining an Ice Cube's day. Yep, we're playing Calamity, so we're gonna fight Cryogen. All right, let's try out the boss. If we fail, it's all good. We do not do damage. Our Hellfire Blaster does. All right, he's going in derpy mode, I think. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't see jack shit in this background. All right, much better. What is he? I don't know what these are. Oh, yeah, more projectile hell. Damn, this adrenaline's taking its, its sweet time, huh? Come on. Come on. Ooh. Give me that adrenaline, baby. Come on. No! He f***ing teleport! Why? I, unironically, the snowstorm is helping me see the freaking boss pellets. Ugh! Ugh! All right. Cryogen done. We got the snailish hypothermic honey blaster. What does it do? Uh, spawns one to two homing icicles. 
So I'm 16. I will take that. We also got the soul of Cryogen, which counts as wings. By taking Cryogen's soul, we now have the ability to fly higher than Daedalus ever could. And with this, we take it to the mechanical worm and give him the biggest reality check ever. Oh, we got it. We got it. Ooh. Ooh. Trader B. Who is that? And now with access to Mithril and Oral Comb, we craft the hot honey rifle and craft the cyst comb, which is absolutely disgusting. I don't know what type of ass crack you pulled this from, but this gives us the amazing Iker abilities, so I'm willing to compromise. But even with all of these new weapons, the honey shotgun that I still have is still for some reason so much more appealing. Maybe it's my toxic ex from another life, but it's really hard for me to let go of this shotgun. Oh, that actually might be a sign from God. Anyway, we go on and test these weapons out on the destroyer. I mean, I mean the twin. Sorry, they're both weak. But anyway, we test out these weapons on the twins. And like an abusive father with his new shock collars that he wants to try on his kids. Wait, that's actually kind of messed up. Oh my God, wait, we're about to kill the spasmatasm. Oh my God, the pro B honeycomb is actually crazy. I think we just killed the spaz. Oh my God, right now he's gonna die. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, what? Why did we kill them so fast? I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. All right. See, yeah, when you kill them, you don't get... All right, we got a new weapon. All right, well, we got, we got, we got ocular remote. Calls upon the retina comb and spaz comb to technically, to tear up... To temporarily fight for you. Only one pair of twins can be alive and once each twins drain your honey. What is it? Hmm. It's like a summon? Oh my god, this is so cool. Now, for some reason, when you kill mechanical bosses, if you guys haven't been able to tell, we don't get hollowed bars at all. I'm assuming they're saving that for after you beat all the mechanical boss. I don't know. It's some type of concept called delayed gratification crap. I hate it. I like immediate gratification. That's why I'm addicted to a little too many things. I finally got some adamantite stuff and was able to mine the cryonic ore that I was being edged from by cryogen. This gives us access to something called... Daedalus armor. Daedalus veil. Boom. Daedalus breastplate and then Daedalus legs. Boom. All right, I have Daedalus armor now. So we're going from 37 to 55 defense. You have a chance to cause crystals to, call, to fall from the sky on hit. Also, do we do more damage? Uh, no, we do less damage. Oh my god, wait. Yeah, we do a little bit less damage. Okay, interesting. I assuming that's what's gonna happen with the beast sniper armor. Let's go ahead and find some wyverns. Just kidding, they're called wyverns. If you ever say wyverns, you're saying it wrong. That's wrong. Oh my god! The syscomb is kind of insane. Oh my god, if we had the syscomb during the destroyer fight, it would have been over in like five seconds. All right. Starlight wings. Yes. This gives us a damage boost too whenever we wear the, uh, the actual armor set, which is nice. All right, let's make a night time. And let's summon mechanical skulls. And then let's throw a syscomb on it. Uh, let's... Hit it, Adrian. Nice. And then let's do the ocular remote. I don't remember if this version of Skeletron Prime, we actually have to kill all of the hands. But right now, it looks like it's fucking possible. All right, we got we to gotta cool, we gotta calm down. We got to calm down. Our destroyer probe is still active, though. Almost all of the hands are done. All of the hands are done. But wait, this is Skeletron Prime. He might regrow his arms back. What is he fucking doing? Oh, let's get this. Oh, my God. It's not hard. It's just there's a lot of fucking lasers. Oh, my God. No, I had fucking adrenaline. Come on. Yes! The hollow has been blessed with consecrated stone. Jungle gross restless. Fan. Wait, why did the steampunker get sniped? Oh, we finally get hollow bars. And we got a metal plated honeycomb. What does this do? Hold left click to channel the power of the honeycomb prime? Whoa. Now this is sick. All right, I'm going to put my honey shot rifle kind of away. I'm going to use all of the mechanical bosses like things. I think that's so cool. All right, now we can get hollowed, uh, hollowed bars. And I'm pretty sure in this version, we have to mine it, which is fine by me. After killing the mechanical bone jiggler, we started crafting some sexy things like the honeycomb of the damned. I don't know where I found this, but this thing was hot. We also crafted the honey flare cannon and began crafting some holy crusader armor, which makes us almost kind of look like the hero in your child the dreams but instead of being superman we're more like homelander and since this was calamity before plantera it's almost actually mandatory to fight the calamitous clone and yeah i know this was the old one we're playing on the old team mod version sorry i forgot to check what version is compatible with please don't comment slurs and insults please don't do it Ooh, good damage good damage i'm oh where did that one come from all right Nothing too crazy. I've done this a million times. Beekeeper class makes it easier, if anything. Man, I actually missed the uh, new uh, Calamitous clone fight. It's really nice. This feels so bland compared to the old, uh, to the new one. My brothers have been reborn. Oh, you can suck my nuts, guys. I got brothers too. I got the twins. I got the OG twins. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm focused up right now. This fight is over. I just need some, I just need a little bit more honey. All right, all right, come on, come on. This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Another bullet hell? Oh my God, shooting the projectiles from fucking Alabama. Oh my God. As soon as my honey recharges, it's dead. Please. 
Yes! Oh my god, I have 25 HP. Oopsies, I might have. <laughs> oh, wait, what is this? Broken Hero Sword, the true nectar slasher for the B blade. Wait, that sounds really cool. Wait, let me make that right now. Oh, wait, we can make the fast honeycomb of disaster. What is this? There was a chaotic honeycomb which spawns lasers near enemies. Upon hitting an enemy, the honeycomb spawns calamitous and her brothers. Let me try this out. What the? F but anyway, we crafted the Stinger Scimitar right after the fight, and which it was, it, you know, I, I, it was kind of like a bootleg blade of grass. But I'll take it though. I'll take it. I'll always take things for free. But now we had a whole flurry of bosses to fight, including Leviathan, Anahita, Ashim Arius, and Plantera. But first, we gotta kill Desert Scourge's ugly cousin, Aquatic Scourge. Now these bosses aren't mandatory, right? But bullying wasn't mandatory in middle school, and yet some people still did it. Sometimes I still see my bully when I look in the mirror. But sometimes you have to be ready in order to fight these bosses, right? They're, they're kind of hard, I'm not gonna lie. But sometimes when you're trying to get ready, you can do something like accidentally spawning them. Da, 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 da. Oh my god. We also had a new visitor called the Trader B NPC, which kind of looked like if the guide put on a swollen bee mask to hide his cyst comb acne. He sold us some really cool bee trinkets that I kind of like put on and forgot about. But we finally gathered enough materials to summon up the aquatic skirt. And let me just say, our specialty really is penetration. Oh, oh. Look at that damage, baby. What am I saying? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. On. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta let our honey regen. Oh my, it's the calamitous one. It's insane. Also, look. Oh, that's dumb. Oh, that's dumb. That's not even right. That was brutal. That was a massacre. Anyway, we got the we got the Nada comb, which vomits the spread of aquatic bees. But why would I use this when I could just use this thing that literally burr? And now we take this special power and we take it to the beautiful Rimstone Elemental, where we, of course, make quick work of her. Our bees are doing some type of number on our folks that I don't even want to talk about. But of course, we don't stop there. We take this power and we take it to our beloved favorite route. We head on over to the jungle. And of course, we should first make an arena before we do absolutely anything at all. Let me get a few more chlorophyte and then instead of waiting for a plain terrible to spawn we'll just make the spawner itself and then get that done on done and over with oh we also found this little area i think wait what what is this thing oh my god that's the bulb no you gotta be kidding me that's the plain terror's music oh god i can't tell i can't i Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. queen b what the fuck dude are you mad because i i took all your bees Come on, dude. Th why is there two of them? Dude, give me a break. This is actually crazy, man. Oh my god. With a lack of power and our penetration failing us, I decided to take inspiration from my home country and build a bazooka. Feeling the colonial and imperialistic spirit, I decided to double my arena space and fall playing Terra one more time. Yeah, I'm still kind of dying, but I actually had a little innocent theory. You see, I realized that I had an Achilles heel, and that was the fact that my shield was actually limiting my GPS. Now, the bees charge whenever you dash would release bees that could do damage, but think about it like this. You theoretically can only do damage per tick, and instead of that damage being from my weapon per tick, it's from the low B shield damage per tick. Now, this is obviously just a theory per tick, and I could be completely wrong per tick. But anyway, I was able to obviously defeat Plantera, and I had access to the dungeon and delicious ectoplasmic goo. We've crafted a beautiful, pretty radical B weapon called the B blade, which looks really cool, but I actually didn't use it as much because I didn't really like it. We tested it out in the solar eclipse to kill Mafron for a leash of Mafron. That's pretty kinky. But for some reason, our weapons wasn't really doing us justice right now. I'm, I'm really thinking that it's just because we have the Calamity extension and the regular B mod. Or maybe I just suck at the game. I'm really just going to lean on that. But we go back into the dungeon to gather the materials for one of the final honey armor sets in this mod. And of course, gathering materials went really well. Are you serious, dude? Well, I did say I was playing on an older version. <sighs> you know, it's to be expected. You know, good thing it's not going to happen again. What the f- I should really do more research on the mods I play. Anyway, after gathering the materials again for the second time, we craft ourselves some Honey Hoarder armor. Let's make the Honey Hoarder hood and then the Honey Hoarder mask. Let's see what it looks like. Bing, bang, bong. All right, this is the hood. We have gone from 48 to 35 uh, defense. That's not good. Set bonus increased honey regeneration. 33% chance not to use honey. If we have that, then we don't have to use the Hyman's apiary. Holy shit, we're not using honey at all. Wait. We don't. Oh, wait. I'm going to use this. And then what about the mask? Mask gives us more defense. Honey materializes on a critical attacks. Yeah, but this one, the regen isn't as fast. But this is what 
be this is like a dps one i'm right, i'm gonna keep on both of them i'm gonna hold on to the dps one just because you know it's like dps and also no it's more it's like defense defense i should say of course we then craft some calamity angel treads and craft the terra honeycomb these are all things from the calamity mod which are pretty god dang sexy and now with the power of the terra comb we can confidently try the leviathan and anahita fight once again and to a mild degree of constant pain and difficulty we actually kind of have fun in this fight i'm lying right now i hit her like none what happened to all my homing capabilities Oh my god, please go into the Leviathan phase soon. I don't think I've ever had damage worse than this. Oh my god. Oh, there we go. All right, let's try this out. Hopefully, this is a little bit easier. I think it is going to be easier because at least the Terra one, you can like spam it on top. Okay, we're doing really good damage. But I know if we get hit like one time, we're dead like a fucking rabbit. All right, we got adrenaline. Come on. Ooh, that's some good damage, baby. Ow. Fuck me. Now we got both of these ass hats on me. Oh my god, Anahita is so tanky. And for what? Oh, I was Leviathan, not dead. Levi, die. Come on. Yes. All right, that's one down. Okay, we're at full HP. We just gotta let our, our honey restore. Can you see how much... Dude, she's so tanky. It's not even that she's tanky. She's just really small and I can't hit her. Come on. How much HP do you have? 5,000. Please. Por que, mama? I can't believe we're actually gonna win in this fight. Come on. There we go. I don't know why these like star noises are glitching. Also, let's save and exit. So we have the treasure bag and I'm not going to lose it. That took so long. How long did that take? I think that, I mean, yeah, that was first try, but oh, I did not expect to take that long. <laughs> the roar of Leviathan. Oh, I got it. It's embarrassing. What the f do you mean? What does it do? What is that? And well, after that fight, they gave us something that I didn't expect. And that was actually something helpful for the next stage in the game. Now, it might not seem much, but think about it like this, right? Let's say you're getting bullied at school. It sucks, right? Life's tough. Boo-hoo. But then out of nowhere, let's say you solve a crossword puzzle on your cereal box in the morning. And as a reward, you reach into your cereal box and pull out a Glock 19. See what I'm saying? If you can't, let me spell it out for you. The Leviathan weapon goes bounce, bounce, bounce. The Golem boss arena is in a box. That means good weapon number go up and HP number or go down because of bounce bounce this is the perfect arena for this weapon oh my god i'm dying oh my god wait what i why did i did i just choke this fight come on no well what's an adrian video without dying to golem multiple times i just turned on adrenaline how am i still not al how am i alive oh my god thank god i took like one hit during that holy shit. we got a legendary pixel dude i was focused up dude thank god all right what do we get we got the tome of the sun what the heck i'm not questioning it i'm just happy to have it <laughs> now before killing ashram deus we gotta kill his little deformed sped brother wait that's wait, what is that in chat faint revving from the trader b shop what does that mean dude hello trader b i'm here what do you got for me uh you got the b knee gun that is a very dangerous word the bin the b minigun is what you're trying to tell me yeah all right, hold on. What the fuck? What? Huh? Hold on. Holy sh- Okay, what? I gotta test this out on someone. Um, uh, Ashram Arius, maybe? All right, how much damage is it doing? Ooh, it's pretty consistent. Okay. It's so loud. It is actually so loud. Hey, Ashram Arius. Hope you're having a fantastic, lovely day. Yeah, that's kind of it. That's all I have to say. This is the most insane B weapon so far. Holy shit. Yo, Tome of the Sun's kind of crazy because if you can get it inside, it'll burst and hit him. And then when it homes, it'll hit him again. Oh, we killed it. Oh my god, I was close. But now, folks, we make the final push, ladies and gentlemen. Gentle ladies and big ladies, since beekeeper content stops at Moon Lord, we have to start making preparations for the big fight. And I really mean the big fight. I thought this was going to Supreme Calamitous, but I I, I I read wrong. And so we gather some Scoria ore in the Abyss to start making our hydrothermic bee armor, which honestly wasn't even that much of an upgrade. It's more like a healthier option to our current armor set, like more damage, less honey regen, or the opposite. I don't know. Of course, I said why not both and just have both of them in my inventory but anyway before we fight the lunatic cultists we have to fight astrum deus and so we summon him up to have a little taste of our favorite hobby once again penetrating all right how about the roar of the leviathan oh let's turn up our audio back because i want to hear the little crisp sound of the bees going through its body oh my god it's at its second phase now 
Oh my god, we're doing so much damage. My game lag. Die, 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 die! There we go. Woo! And with Ashram Deus being dead, giving us access to Lunar Fragments, we make our way to absolutely curb stomp the Lunatic Cultist with our grimy little fingers. And the fight, well, it was unbelievably easy. Get it? Oh, come on, dude. That was like the first bee punt I intentionally made in this video. It's not my fault you're not a believer. <laughs> but before the lunar event started, we began gathering the fragments of each tower to make the beekeeper's new exclusive lunar fragment, Photonic Particles. And this yielded us the mighty, the holy, the cosmotic. Is that even a word? Honeycomb of the cosmos. And with this eternal mighty power, there is no way that the moon lord can beat us now. We are of the higher beings. We are on a plane where the unbelievable can happen. We are the future. Holy sh- Okay, I didn't really expect that. But honestly, that's why Batman has some prep time, right? I went to the Lizard Temple to get a cool sun channeling item that gives you access to cool damage and a cool health buff. And then I killed the Greenbringer Gorilla Bug for the Plaguebringer Shield, which now makes my shield cooler and upgrades our bees. And now with all of the Infinity Stones in our gauntlet, we finally fought one more time the most celestial and powerful entity in my semi-modded world, the Moon Lord. And of course, we're doing it with bees. Boom. We did some Gucci Damaji, my friends. Oh my god, I forgot. We have the fucking, like, solar thing. Power of the sun. I forgot to use that with my adrenaline. That was dumb. All right, we're doing a lot of... Dash up of the B shield, yes! All right. We, he has a lot of HP, I'll tell you that. Why did he teleport? We were nowhere near him. I mean, we were near him. Holy fuck. Why does it look like he's not taking any damage? He has 77,000 HP? I don't even know, dude. And now the world is safe. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if only we could beat Supreme Calamitous with some bees. Unfortunately, that's not possible unless we use God Mode. Oh yeah, we also got this Queen Larvae item, which summons the Queen Bee herself. Yeah, it's pretty cool and strong, just like how I like my women. But anyway, yeah, that's the Beekeeper mod and the Calamity extension itself. And let me just say, I highly recommend you guys play this mod. It really changed my life for the better, truly. But jokes aside, this mod was really, really fun. It was as fun as I played it two years ago, and it's even more fun today. I highly recommend you guys check out this mod in the description. And also, if you guys want to see me beat Terraria Master, mode of a steering wheel leave a comment i'm not joking thank you to war thunder for sponsoring this video <laughs>